Shall we rise up to pray? Today, the Lord will bless you. Amen. Whatever be the expectation in this program today, it shall be granted to you. Amen. And so, as many of you that came to this place today and you have been going through demonic possession, bound, and oppressed, possessed, and over the period you can't get yourself, I am wondering when will you be delivered? Today, as I stand before you, deliverance is coming your way. Amen. Just place your hand upon your chest. Every contrary spirit, pack your load now. Stubborn spirit husband, I rebuke you, I command you, pack your load. Come out and enter the bottomless pit and remain bound in Jesus' name. Amen. Spirit of untimely dead, I rebuke you, I bind you. I cast you out of the body, I cast you out I want to remain bound in Jesus' name. Amen. And you, spirit of failure and backwardness, I bind you. Spirit of poverty, I cast you out of the life. I command to enter the bottomless pit and remain bound in Jesus' name. Amen. Spirit wife, the Lord rebuke you. Amen. I bind you, I cast the abyss in Jesus' name. Amen. Every spirit of affliction, spirit of moving object or cobwebs, I rebuke you, I bind you, I bind you upon. I cast the abyss in Jesus' name. Amen. Every contrary spirit, serpentine spirit, I change your ancestral spirit, I bind you, I cast the abyss in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to remain bound. Every problem they brought here today, every spirit of high BP, every spirit of coronavirus, every spirit of infirmities, I bind you, I chain you, I cast it abyss in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I present my people before you. Every plant you have not planted in their life today, I command it to be protected. As they place their hands upon their chest, O oh Lord, I decree in the spirit I enter their body consciously or unconsciously through initiation or through any means as I'm standing here now. Lord, I order their deliverance from their body right now. Let those people protect by the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, do the deliverance now. Do the deliverance now. Deliver them one by one. I'm waiting for you. Deliver them right now. Yes. I can see great things taking place now. Thorough deliverance. Deliver her. Deliver him. Deliver them. I'm waiting for you. Deliver them. Every one of them. Deliver them completely. Yes. Lose. 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 I bind those spirits. I chain those spirits. I cast them to abyss in Jesus' name. Amen. Precious that day. I pray for this one having high BP, be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. The one having heaviness of the head, I command freedom for you. Amen. And you that is having stomach pains and stomach ulcer, be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. The one that have forgetfulness, I can't solve it. And that terrible typhoid fever, Malaria fever, I bind you. I cast that beast in Jesus' name. Amen. All those pains and weakness your body, I rebuke them. I command them to disappear now in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray for you that fear of death. I bind that spirit. I bind that fear. And all those evil dreams of dead, dead people, I bind them. I cast them that beast in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray for you that it's too lean and purging. Be healed. Amen. That person bleeding now, be healed. Amen. That person having terrible cough, I cancel it, be free in Jesus' name. Amen. And you that they are taking things from you in the dream, taking your money, taking what belongs to you, by the authority in the name of Jesus, I stop the evil. Amen. I decree that whatsoever taken from you will be restored in Jesus' name. Amen. All that battle you are going through in the place of work, Father, give them victory. Amen. Lord, I pray deliver this person from yoke of debts in Jesus' name. Amen. 
that he bless my people, touch my people one by one. I pray that the expectation today be granted in Jesus' name. Amen. Every ugly situation receives solution. Amen. Be free completely in Jesus' name. Amen. Wherever you are, I declare you free. Amen. As we listen to this word, your life can never be the same. Amen. Shall we get seated? Remember me. Remember me. Remember me, my Lord Jesus. Remember me. Father, remember. Father in heaven, remember me. Remember me, my Lord Jesus. Remember. Father, remember. Father in heaven, remember me. Remember me, my Lord Jesus. Remember me. He will remember you today. Amen. Do it for me. Do it for me. Do it for me. All the glory will be your own. Oh, Father, Father in heaven, do it for us. Do it for us. All the glory will be your Jehovah, the mighty in battle, do it for us. Do it for us. All the glory will be your own. He will do it for you. Amen. And he will take the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. And turn your Bible to Job chapter 14, verse 14. Job chapter 14, verse 14. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait my change comes. In Job chapter 42, Job chapter 42, I read verse 10, Job 42 and verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends, also the Lord gave Job to wise as much as he had before. In John chapter 8, John's Gospel chapter 8, I read verse 36. John chapter 8 and verse 36. Look at your Bible. John, Scotsbury chapter 8, verse 30 says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And so from these chapters and verses, I'm talking to you on a topic that your ugly situation must change for good. Amen. That your ugly situation must change for good. Amen. No matter what you are going through in this life, and you have gone to many places, you have done many things, you have done everything possible to be free. And instead of the solution, the problem is getting worse and worse. And as a result, you are going through a terrible experience or horrible experience in life. And people are asking you, where is your God? Because of what you are going through, what many people are seeing that is happening in your life, they are asking you a question, where is your God? To them, if God be with you, why is all this thing happening to you? And they keep on asking you in your family, where is your God? In the place of work, where is your God? In the school, they're asking, where is your God? And these people are seeing you and then talking about God and, you know, preaching the gospel and, in fact, telling them you're a child of God. And they're wondering, why is this thing happening to you? And I'm asking you, where is your God? Look at the book of 
Psalm 42. Psalm chapter 42. I read Psalm 42, verse 3. My tears have been my meat day and night. Why they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? Because of what is happening to you. You are crying, you are weeping, and people are asking you every time, Where is your God? Look at verse 10. Psalm 42, verse 10. As with a sword in my bones, my enemies approach me while they say daily unto me, Where is thy God? Because of what is happening to you, and you are weeping and crying, and the enemies are mocking you and asking you, Where is your God? I want you to pay attention. If that is your case, if that is your case, that there are mockery and a far bringing reproach upon you and making caricature of you, I want you to understand there is nothing to worry about. After all, those that were before us that had these ugly experiences, they asked them the same question. They went through a lot of things and for many years. But when the situation changed for good, the people that were asking them, where is your God, they were put to silence. I'm assuring you, your enemies are put to silence. All that asking you, where is your God? When they shall see what the Lord shall do for you today, all of them shall be ashamed. Amen. And so, there is nothing to worry about. Be rest assured that today, that your ugly situation was changed for good. Are you hearing me? Spiritually, physically, materially, financially, something new will happen in your life. And in fact, God will put testimony in your mouth. All those challenging situations, the Lord will step into that matter. Amen. And the testimony shall be your portion. Amen. Look at Psalm 40, verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord. That's the remedy. Waiting patiently, endurance, patience. Now, what happened to him? And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. The psalmist waited patiently. God heard him cry. He see you. Something will happen to them. Because as for waiting, you have waited. And the Lord has come to give you attention. If you look at chapter 40 verse 2. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit. I don't know the pit you have been to. Pit of poverty. Pit of sickness. Pit of unemployment, pit of academic challenges, pit of the enemies that are troubling you. Listen to me. In this program today, you are coming out of that pit. Amen. God has done it before. He's here to do it again. Look at that place I'm living. Out of a mighty clay and set my feet upon a rock and establish my goings. It's serious. All the slippery ground, all the rising and falling, the Lord's bringing you out. Amen. And the Lord will establish your feet upon the rock of ages. And he will establish your going. Are you hearing me? He will set your feet upon the rock of ages. And will establish your going. Today, the foundation of your miracle will be in the Lord. And nobody can bring you down. Nobody can take what belongs to you. I'm assuring you that after today and this divine visitation in your life, you shall rise to fall no more. Amen. You shall rise above your equals. Amen. All your enemies are mocking you. They shall be put to shame. Amen. So take note in verse 3. And he has put a new song in my mouth. That is it. Today you will sing a new song. From now on, you will sing a new song. Amen. Because the Lord will do a remarkable work in your life. Amen. That all the people that mock you, they shall see what the Lord has done. If you look at that place, look at it. He said, and he has put a new song in my mouth. Even praise on our God. Yes, from today, because of what the Lord will do in your life, you shall praise the Lord. Amen. 
And if you look at that place, it said, Many shall see it. Oh, what God will do for you shall not be hidden. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Are you hearing me? People shall see what God do to you, what the miracle God will perform in your life, and they will put their confidence in, in God, and they will serve God because of you. In fact, your miracle will provoke sinners to repentance. Can I hear you say amen? amen. Your miracle will provoke backsliders and we people to serve God the more. You see you, what the Lord is going to do in this program, my friend, it shall be a generational miracle. Do you hear what I said? Yes, generational miracle. That means from generation to generation, all the people that are born in your family shall be partakers in Jesus' name. Amen. So you shall go home from this very program totally free and full of testimonies. In fact, totally free and your mouth shall be full of testimonies. Amen. And people will see it, they shall see it and say, look, at what God has done. If you look at Matthew chapter 15 and verse 13. Matthew chapter 15. I leave verse 13. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up. Whatever God has not planted in your life, in your way, in your family, Whatever God has not permitted that the enemy has done, my friend, look at it for the last time. Every plant which my heavenly Father did not plant shall be rooted up. I said they shall be rooted up. Sickness shall be rooted up. Poverty shall be rooted up. Rising and falling shall be rooted up. Can they make failure? All those challenges shall be rooted up. He see all of you that things are not working well now. Delay in marriage and delay in conception and problem left, right, front and back, all of them shall be rooted up in Jesus' name. Amen. So get ready. Today, this program is for you that your ugly situation must change for good. Amen. And people shall see it and glorify the Lord. So look at that ugly situation for the last time. You shall see them no more. Amen. After today, you look for them, you shall see them no more. Amen. I say you shall look for them, but you will see what the Lord has done. In Isaiah chapter 43, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 13. Yea, before the day was, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will walk. And who shall let it? Who is that person? Who can stop the work of God in your life? Tell me, the devil, demons, human agent or the devil, that man or that woman, who is that that can stand before God Almighty to hinder him from saving you, from delivering you, from perfecting the miracle, from blessing you? I can't find the person. Any being, God said, I walk through that and burn them with fire. If you look at this place, in Romans chapter 9, one thing that is very certain, look at it. What God started, he will finish it. In Romans chapter 9, verse 28, for he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Are you hearing it? The Lord will finish the work. It's sealed. God has started a good work in your life. God Almighty has given you salvation. I don't know what you are going through. Everything that accompanies salvation, the Lord will do it for you. He will give you sanctification, purity. He will baptize with Holy Ghost and with power. With all the fruit and all the gift of the Spirit. And listen to me. The Lord will bless you with the material things. A financial miracle shall be a portion. I'm assuring you, whatever God has started in your family, in your career, He will finish it. Amen. Are you hearing me? God has given you a husband. God Almighty has given you a wife. He will take care of everything to take care of your family in Jesus' name. Amen. And so get ready. That good work that God has started, He will finish it. Nothing will hinder Him, nothing will oppose Him. 
If you look at First Samuel, First Samuel chapter three, verse twelve. Look at the Bible. First Samuel chapter three, verse twelve. In that day, I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. I want to let you know God will finish the work. Whatever he started, he will bring it to accomplishment in Jesus' name. So be rest assured that this program is for you. That ugly situation must change for good. The Lord will do it. So we shall consider the fluence of headings. One, the reason. An ugly situation described. Two, our expected response and the benefits. Let's go to point number one. The reasons and the ugly situation described. We all should know that our Lord Jesus Christ suffered for all our sins and was crucified at the cross of Calvary. If you look at the Bible, in Isaiah chapter 53, Isaiah chapter 53, look at it. I read Isaiah 53 from verse 3. 53, Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 3. He despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our first seeds from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have torn everyone to his own way. And the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. If you look at that place, you will see that Jesus Christ came and suffered for me and for you, for everyone. He took away our punishment, our suffering. He took away our sins. I want to let you know what Jesus Christ has taken away from you, no man can put it on you. What Jesus Christ has taken away from you, you can continue to suffer it. What is suffered for you, you can suffer it. And so be rest assured that Jesus has finished that work and freedom shall be your portion. Amen. If you look at the book of John chapter 19 and verse 30, John chapter 19, I read John's gospel chapter 19 and verse 30. Look at what Jesus did for you and look at the declaration. It says, chapter 19, verse 30. And when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the goods. Christ paid the price for you. He suffered the cross of Calvary and gave up the ghost. He took all your punishment. He died your death, took away your sin. He paid the price by his own blood. I want you to understand that what is suffered for us, we shall not suffer it again. What he has taken away from us, we cannot carry them again. And if the devil has brought such problem or sickness upon you, he shall not remain in your life anymore. As we turn to him with that burden today, I'm assuring you that burden shall be removed. Amen. Are you hearing me? That suffering, that affliction shall be removed. I said it shall not remain in you. As we come to him with that burden today, because he says in John chapter 8 verse 36, John chapter 8, 
I read verse 36. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. The only condition for this thing to remain in your life, if Christ has not set you free, but if Jesus has set you free, then you have total freedom. You cannot be a slave of sin, a slave of Satan anymore because the Son has set you free. And total freedom is your portion. And so, you are going home today with nothing less than total freedom because you take what belongs to you. You cannot take the accusation and lies of the devil or suffering of the wicked one anymore. He see you Freedom is your portion. Amen. I say freedom is your portion. Amen. So that ugly situation, you will see it no more. Remember, if the devil is making you to believe that you have them, it is a lie that cannot hold. If you look at John chapter 8, verse 44, John chapter 8, and verse 44, John chapter 8, verse 44. You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. He is a liar and the father of it. So it is very clear that the devil is a liar. Whatever that he has, you know, made you to believe or projected your body now and make you to claim it and have it is a lie. We cannot accept the lie from him because Jesus, the bondman to truth, has told us the truth and we must believe the truth. And the truth is that if the Son therefore shall make us free, we shall be free indeed. And by strife we are healed, and I am the Lord that healed thee. And I taken away our infirmities and buried on the cross of Calvary. What Jesus has done, he said, it is finished. We can't have them anymore. So today, as we bring those problems to the Lord, that lie or ugly situation shall be removed. In Matthew chapter 11, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, chapter 11, look at your Bible, and verse 28, come unto me, O ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. As we come to the Lord, I'm assuring you that burden shall be taken away from us. And we shall be totally free. No wonder the Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Nevertheless, when he shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. So, one thing that is very certain, as we turn to the Lord today, all those problems we have, those lies of the devil, you shall see them no more in Jesus' name. Amen. Every sickness, every disease, every affliction, poverty, all of that shall be cancelled in Jesus' name. Amen. So, that ugly situation must change today. Amen. And as we turn to the Lord in prayers, I'm assuring you, you shall go home with testimonies. Amen. That takes me to point number two. Our expected response and the benefits. Whatever be the ugly situation that you are going through, now you should remember that our Lord and Master Jesus Christ has taken them away at the cross of Calvary. When he said in John chapter 19, verse 30, John chapter 19, verse 30, look at the Bible. John chapter 19, and verse 30. And it reads, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. So Christ has finished and paid the price at the cross of Calvary and said, it is finished. If that be the case, consider what you are going through as lies of the devil. As we've seen in John chapter 8, verse 44, whatever you're going through now is a lie because Christ has finished all that uh, trouble. He has paid the price at the cross of Calvary. And so, as we turn to the Lord in prayers today, that lies of verse shall be removed. Are you hearing me? 
that ugly situation must change. You see, whenever you come to the Lord, that's the beginning of your victory. Because you have carried them away. You have taken away your punishment, your poverty. Of course, the Bible said he was made poor that you might be rich. The Bible said by his tribe you are healed. The Bible says if the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And therefore, don't believe lies. Believe the truth. No matter what the devil has projected in your mind, your body, my friend, it is a lie. No wonder Jesus said. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, come to me. Oh, you that labor and heavy ladder, and I'll give you rest. Whenever you come to him, your situation will change. Now, look at what happened in the Bible. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Please open your Bible. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. And I read chapter 3 and verse 16. And it reads, verse 16, Nevertheless, when he shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. May I remind you, every life of the devil as sickness, as disease, or poverty, or sorrow, or sin, whatever the devil is lying in your body now, as you turn to the Lord, all of them are veiled. And that veil, that cloth, that piece of cloth shall be removed from your body in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you hearing me? As you turn to the Lord, the veil, the lies, the affliction, the poverty, the ugly situation will be removed. And you shall be totally free. Confirming his word. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. So turn to the Lord and receive your freedom. Look at what happened there in verse 17. Now, the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. When the spirit of God comes upon you, what follows is freedom. Freedom from affliction, from sorrow, from ugly situation, from sickness, from, this, from sin, from Satan. And today, freedom shall be your portion. Now, look at verse 18. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord, He see you today. As you behold the Lord, you shall be transformed. You shall be changed to the image of the Lord from glory to glory. He see you. Spiritually, you shall be sound. Physically, you shall be sound. Every area of your need, I'm actually freedom. Freedom. Total freedom. And so, the rest are sure that from henceforth, you will testify. People are going to prove that you are serving the living God. All those that ask me, where is your God? Let them wait and see what the Lord will do to them. That lies of the devil cannot hold anymore. Are you hearing me? The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 31. Romans chapter 8. Look at the Bible. Verse 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And some If God is with you, can coronavirus be against you? Can HIV and cancer be against you? Can the high BP and low BP be against you? Can typhoid from another person be against you? Can poverty be against you? Can the devil and demon be against you? The answer is no. Because they cannot share the glory with God. Are you hearing me? God say, my glory will I not share with another, nor graven image. Therefore, if God be for you, all those things will face all away. Well. And if there is any sign, you see, and if they try to scratch your body, you just look up on the cross and look at the Christ who was crucified for you. Where your burden was taken away, and freedom shall be your in Jesus' name. Amen. The veil shall be removed. As you turn to the Lord, well, they tormented in the dream. And you wake up and look up unto the Lord, turn to the Lord. My friend, all their torment and projection will vanish away. Amen. Are you hearing me? 
As that affliction, all that trouble come, you turn to the Lord, and the veil shall be removed. Because they can't stand God. If God be for you, who can be against you? Look at verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? My friend, I want you to understand, God has given us Jesus. And what is it that is above Jesus? If Jesus was given to us free of charge, I want to let you know deliverance is free of charge, healing is free of charge, everything we are looking for, salvation, deliverance, blessings of God, my friend, will not be withheld from you because God did not withhold Jesus Christ, the only son. Therefore, all things are yours. Are you hearing me? Now, I don't know who is accusing you and who is, you know, mocking you and who is, you know, hindering you and who is saying you will not take it. If you look at verse 33, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Listen to me, nobody can do that. It's only God that justifies. And I'm assuring you today, you shall be justified in the name of the Lord for turning to him in Jesus' name. Amen. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 8, he said, come, come. Will you come? Come and see your problem no more. Come and the veil shall be taken away. Come. The soul shall be no more. Come. Your situation will change for good. But if the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Will you come? So today, any charge against you as the result of that ugly situation shall be discharged Amen. by the power in the blood of Jesus. They shall be discharged today by the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. And that ugly situation must be changed for good in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget, in the book of John chapter 8, verse 36, it says, if the Son therefore shall make you free, what happened? You shall be free indeed. Let me hear you say, I am free indeed. I am free indeed. That is your right. No man can take it away from you. And so, declare what belongs to you and possess it. For the Bible said, with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. But with mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Confess what you believe. And it shall come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, look at the Bible. In the book of Joel, chapter 2, I read verse 32. Chapter 2, verse 32. And it shall come to pass, and whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said. And in the remnant whom the Lord shall call, listen to me, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be delivered. Today, salvation is coming your way, deliverance is coming your way. So get ready. Today, that ugly situation must change for good. I said it must change. Amen. I'm assuring you today, you must testify. Amen. Look at the Bible in Psalm 40, verse 1. Psalm chapter 40, verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he cried unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of a mighty clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. So get ready. As God did it for the psalmist of old, as he did it for Job, and for so many others in the Old and New Testament, I'm assuring you it is your turn today. Amen. He will do it for you in Jesus' name. Amen. And in Job chapter 42 verse 10, Job chapter 42. I read verse 10. Look at it. 42. And verse 10. Job chapter 42. Look at the Bible. 
I read verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. When he prayed for his friends, also the Lord gave Job to wives as much as he had before. The Lord turned the captivity of Job. If you look at verse 12. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand cheer access. God bless his letter end more than his beginning. And this shall be a testimony from now on. Your letter end shall be blessed more than beginning in Jesus' name. Amen. So get ready. Whatsoever ugly situation, come before the Lord. Ask in Matthew chapter 7 verse 7. It says, ask Matthew chapter 7 verse 7. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. So, ask the Lord to change your situation. In your body, in your marriage, in your business, in your academics, in your works. Ask the Lord, change my situation. I have waited for you. Change my situation. And the Lord will do it for you unhindered in Jesus' name. Amen. He will finish the work. So as we conclude, for those who are sinners and backsliders, they should repent of their sins and confess them to the Lord and promise God no more. They should believe that Jesus died for them, shed his precious blood for them, and was buried, and on the third day, he rose again for their justification. They should confess it and believe it. They should receive Jesus into their heart as their Lord, as their personal Savior. And the grace to sin no much of theirs in Jesus' name. Amen. So, you should remember, a Christian is not a sinner, and a sinner is not a Christian. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, he said, he that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for he still remains in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. So, take note. If you are asking what is sin, in First John chapter 5, verse 17, all unrighteousness is sin. Anything that is not righteousness is what? Sin. Unbelief is sin. Unforgiveness is sin. Selfishness is sin. Anger, lying, pride, contention, and bitterness, keeping malice, bearing grudge, lost and after evil things, covetousness. All these things are sins. And love of the world, love of money, and insincerity, unfaithfulness, blasphemy, all these are terrible sins. Hatred, envy, but by it is speaking evil of other people. All these things are terrible sins. And if you are involved in them, confess them, repent of them, renounce them, promise God no more. Such your life. Are you involved in to, you know, murmuring, cursing people, swearing with heaven and earth, worshiping an idol, making an idol, having an idol in your heart? Confess them and renounce them and promise God no more. I don't know that if you are into are you among those that go to native doctors to make sham or for divination or for pan reading, confess them and say no more. Gather their property, bond them. And if you are among those that belong to secret court, belong to marine court, witchcraft court, any kind of or local international campus court, renounce them, gather their property, bond them, surrender to Jesus, make your Lord their personal savior. I don't know that if you are into stealing, into robbery into fraud. Confess your sins and say, Lord, no more. Any kind of robbery, any kind of stealing, whether from the place you are walking, repent and promise God no more. And if you're a thief, a fraudster, when we are giving offering in this church, please don't give us your money. Return it back to the owner. I mean, you are waste. 
I don't know the wickedness I'm into. All these people are involved into, you know, to fornication, into adultery, masturbation, homosexual, lesbianism. These are gross wickedness against humanity. Amend your ways. All those involved in the immoral thought, that sin, confess them, renounce them, and pray for inner purity. And if you're among those people that are into private or public prostitution, selling your body for money, renounce and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Are you involved into rape? These are wickedness against humanity, against God. Amend your ways. And all those involved into, you know, killing, any kind of killing, whether ritual killing, hired assassin, whether involved into kidnapping and killing, all these are terrible things. Confess them and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Please, if I involve you to these things, don't give us your money. Amend your ways. Those are fighting and quarreling. That is sin. Those beating their wife and disobedient to their husband, disobedient to their parents, that is sin. And those that are employed in the place to work, they don't do the work, they collect salary. That is sin, that's fault. Or you don't pay those working for you, that's also sin. Those that give bribe and take bribe and stop money from people, that is sin. Those that are into smuggling, confess and say, I'm sorry. Or maybe you take snuff, smoke cigarettes, in their hand, cocaine, heroin, you are selling it and buying it for people. Repent and promise God no more. I don't know the wickedness you are into. Those that are into taking alcoholic drinks, 1% or half percent, whether a local one or foreign one, whether you are buying it for people, or you are working in the place where they are selling it, my friend, resign and make your ways. The unrighteous are not inherit the kingdom of God. All unrighteousness is sin. Those that are involved into bleaching their body, becoming yellow overnight, that is sin. Those that do spa, that's sin. You don't need makeup at all, at all. You see these people that marry and divorce. That's also a terrible sin. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning, made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife. And they twins shall be one flesh. Wherefore, there are no more twins but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Take note. Not a man and a man. Not a woman and a woman. That's, that's gay. That's wickedness. That is evil. That's abomination. It is a man and a woman. Not a man and a third wife. A man and a woman. Not a woman being a second and third wife. That's wrong. And so if you make such mistake, you must correct it before it is too late. Do restitution. If you have a man that married them three wives, you remove the second and third and retain your first wife. And if a woman that is a second wife or third wife, pack your load and go. I mean, your ways. And if you left your husband to go to marry another person, you must return back to your husband. And if you send away your wife, you must bring your wife back as long as the first wife. Until the dead, do your part. Marriage is only loosed at death. But while you are still living, you have no right to divorce your wife or divorce your husband. Amend your ways. You see all these people that pain their hands and pain their leg, pain their mouth and pain their eyes, pain their body, and put extra finger, extra eye. Attachment and weave on and palming and earrings and jewelry and bango. They make up their body. That is evil. That's unrighteousness. I mean, you are ways. Are you among those that are, you know, young men that do Jericho, rough hair, scattered hair? You play the hair like a woman. That is sin. I mean, you are ways. I don't know the evil you are into. All those that dress, expose their chest, their armpit, their tummy, expose their nakedness. That is sin. My Bible tells me in Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 30, when they are spoiled, what shall they do? Do they go after painting, after ornament? Whenever a woman has spoiled, they begin to make up. You don't need it. That's a mark of those that are spoiled. Amen, you are ways. 
And those that go to bleach and change their body, the Bible said in Psalm 1, that 9 verse 14, God has fearfully and wonderfully made you. And marvelous are the works of God. You don't need my call. I don't know the evil you are into. All unrighteousness is sin. Look at your Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers, but instead with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Those who lead this kind of life, the Bible says they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So amend their ways. And promise God no more. All these evils. Renounce them. Are you involved into a man dressed like a woman? A woman dressed like a man. A woman wearing trousers. Dressed like a man. A man wearing skirt and blouse. My friend, don't do that anymore. Because my Bible tells me that that is an abomination before God. For a woman to change to a man. A man changing to a woman in their dresses, in their life. If you look at the 22 8 verse 5, the woman shall not wear the which pertaining to a man, not to the man, put on woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. The abomination. If anybody is doing that, and abominable people cannot enter heaven. If you look at Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8. But a fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars to have their part in the lake which born with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. All such people shall be cast into hell fire. I pray it shall never be your portion. You repent as you listen to this word. And the Lord will show you, Missy, I have spoken this word to bring to you. You are conviction on what is sin that you are doing so that you can stop it. So you can renounce them and cry for mercy and God will show you mercy. If you look at the book of Proverbs 28 verse 13, it says, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso that confess them and forsake them shall have mercy. And so if you want to have the mercy of God, be convicted of the evil you are doing, renounce them and promise God no more. God has made a provision for the sins that are past. That's why in Exodus chapter 2 verse 19, God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Remember, the blood of animal was a symbolic figure of the blood of Jesus, which is to come in the New Testament. The blood of the everlasting covenant. Because the blood of animal cannot wash away our sins. Rather, it is the blood of the New Testament, the blood of Jesus. In John chapter 1 verse 29, the next day, John said, Jesus coming unto him, and said, Behold the lamp of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Jesus is that lamp, original lamp, that by whose blood our sins are washed away. In John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world, that gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So take note. Christ has come for the redemption of our soul. And he paid the price in John chapter 19, verse 30. When he shed the blood, he said, It is finished. And in John chapter 14, verse 6, he made it clear. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man commit unto the Father but by me. So it is. Only through him will he coincide with God. We have eternal life. In John chapter 10 verse 10b. John chapter 10 verse 10b. I am come that they might have life, have it more abundantly. He has come to give us eternal life. And so today as you surrender to him, your situation will change. You shall become a new person and free from affliction and sorrow and bondage and poverty in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Therefore, 
If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things that passed away, and behold, all things that become new. And so, I want to understand what we need today is to come to the Father through who? Jesus Christ, which I have eternal life. For the Bible said in John chapter 8, verse 30, if the Son therefore shall make us free, what happened? We shall be free indeed. And in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, it says, Come unto me, O ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you your rest. And in John chapter 1, verse 12, but as many as receive him, to then give you power to become the sons of God, even to that I believe on his name. And so believe today, I say that shall be total transformation, newness of life, total change shall come your way in Jesus' name. Amen. And Romans chapter 10, verse 13, he says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. As you call upon the Lord today with all your heart, Renouncing your sin, rejecting the devil, and surrendering everything about you. As you surrender them to Jesus today, there shall be transformation. You shall go home totally free and blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we rise up on our feet as we pray now? Rise up on your feet and call upon the Lord. Confess your sins and repent. Promise God no more. Everybody pray. Everybody confess your sins. Ask for the mercy of God. Father, have mercy upon us. Lord, whatever your people may have done, known and unknown to them, O oh Lord, in your wrath, remember mercy. For mercy rejoices over judgment. Lord, I pray, touch them and transform them, change their life completely for good, O oh Lord. From unrighteousness to righteousness. From the power of Satan to the power of the living God. From bondage to freedom. Father, work on your people. We pray for definite change. Definite change, O oh Lord. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Father, I am sorry, Lord. O oh Lord, I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Jehovah, I am sorry, Lord. Oh, Lord, I am sorry. And one more time. I am sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Jehovah, I am sorry, Lord. Oh, Lord, I am sorry. Just lay your hands upon your chest as I pray for you. That person that's planning to do evil. Don't do it. Repent and promise God no more. And you that is there, that almost every time you are full of evil thoughts, evil thoughts, repent and be free from that evil. Renounce it. I'm assuring you salvation and sanctification shall be your portion. That person also having unbelieving heart Repent and believe the gospel, and it shall be well for you. Amen. And you that are, you know, into masturbation, promise God no more. Ask for the mercy of God. And that person also into, you know, fraud. You do people, repent and renounce that act. Ask for the mercy of God. All of you that are stealing where you are walking, repent and say no more. And that person that involved into armed robbery, repent and renounce that wickedness. Ask for the mercy of God. and mend your ways. I don't know the wickedness you are into. Now is acceptable time. Tomorrow may be too late. That person fighting and quarreling, repents. Promise God no more. The one smoking and drinking, and you taking in their hand, and that person taking her drug, ask for the mystery of God. That woman involved in that adultery, don't do it anymore. That's wickedness. Ask for the mystery of God. Now is acceptable time. Tomorrow may be too late. A person involved in a terrible act of kidnapping and killing. Repent and stop that evil. The Lord will show you mercy. A person is a secret call. Renounce it. Get out of your property and bond them. And mend your ways. You involve in those homosexual. That's wickedness. Repent and promise God no more. I am praying for you. And that person that is also, you know, you take in, abort the child, 
That's wickedness. That's shedding of blood. I mean, you are ways. Now, just say this word after me. Almighty God, I come before in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I confess that I am a sinner. I am very sorry for all my sins. Lord, I promise you, I will never continue in them anymore. From today, I confess and I believe that Jesus Christ died for me. He shed his precious blood for me and he was buried. And on the third day, he rose the gift of justification. Almighty God, use the blood of Jesus Christ. Wash my sins away from my heart. I plead the blood of Jesus. Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my personal Savior. Cancel my name in the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. Give me power to sin no more. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Keep your hands up and pray for you. Sing this song. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. Oh, to Jesus. Live. Said Savior, I surrender, I surrender again. I surrender, I surrender, oh. I surrender, I surrender, oh. oh to Jesus, let the Savior. I surrender. I surrender. Now keep your hands up and pray for you. Our Father in heaven, I come in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, I present my people before you. Whatsoever they have done, known and unknown to them, against you, against humanity, Father, you are wrought. Remember mercy. Every yoke of power that makes them to do evil, by authority, I break that yoke in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, from this moment, I claim their spirit, their soul, their body for Jesus Christ. Cancel the name in the book of death. Write the name in the book of life. Give them power to sin no more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can I hear you say amen? amen. And it is amen in heaven.